Welcome back to Vectorworks 2013. This is the Design 2A series, Episode 4B, and I'm James Russell. In this episode, we're going to be looking at the question that I posed at the end of uh, Episode 4A, which is, al as always, in the video description below as the previous episode. Um, in there, we were going to look at drawing a 3D model of a sailing ship using some of the techniques we learnt in 4A, lofting, uh, extruding along a path, uh, tapered extrudes, that kind of thing. So I'm going to give it a go as per usual. I'm going to probably time lapse it because otherwise we all get bored watching uh, the video without music and sped up and that kind of thing. So just looking at it, I've got a couple of different pictures of ships sitting here next to me on my other monitors uh, and I'm just going to try and draw this as close to scale as I can with some artistic license of course. So here we go. So I thought I'd better pause the video here for a second. Um, we're about to use a technique that I haven't actually shown you yet, so it's a great time to learn it because I've got a practical application to show you. So here I've got one segment of my hull that I've just finished drawing, uh, and I'd like to make some more, but I also want to make them smaller at the same time. We're going to use a thing called the duplicate array up here, and there's three different functions for the duplicate array. It's much like our duplicate tool over here, except this is mainly relying on math. Um, so what I'm going to do is just choose this on, there's the three different forms up here, linear, rectangular, and circular array. And just to give you an example of all three, I'm just going to draw a box, because that's the best way I can start off with these. It's angular, but that's okay, we'll work with it. So if I choose the first option here, we've got linear array, and it just asks us for an offset in three different forms here. We've got a Cartesian offset, which means how far is it moving in the X, Y, or Z uh, Z movement in every single duplicate, the polar offset, so just the distance, an angle, and a Z component, or the mouse click, which is just how far with the mouse and a Z component if required, because obviously in a plan view we can't represent Z with a singular click. So let's say I do 15 duplicates uh, and our box is currently, oh, it's around it's two and a half meters, let's do two and a half meters in there in the Y, so it's going to move upwards by 2,500 every time. And you can see on the side here I've got some other op options. So in this case I've got resize checked, which means it's going to grow by, and let's put um, 0 0.7 in there. So it should decrease in size by 0 0.7 every time. It's a 2D object so I get no Z. And a rotation as well, I'm going to de-check that. But you can have it rotate every single duplicate from the previous duplicate by a certain angle. Hitting OK you'll see there we go, it's made a smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, small, 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 all by the same increment inside there. So that's what I'm going to be using in a second. To show you the other options that we've got here, we can do a rectangular array. Now this is perfect for doing a rostra. Uh, I have to say that's the only thing I use it for. So you can do a number of columns, number of rows. I've already got three columns in there, five rows. Cool. Distance between the columns and rows. So I'm going to say the distance between our columns is uh, 5,240, and the distance between the rows is going to be 2,424. Uh, no resizing this time, because I just want to keep them the same. Hitting OK, you can see I've made this a rectangular array of these pieces that I had before. Now, all of these have to be offset in a slightly different way, but uh, if you've got rectangles and you've done that, you'll end up with a perfect array of rectangles, which is very handy. I'm just going to rotate this to show you the last one, just put it back to flat, like so. The last one's the circular array, uh, and this one's kind of handy. Uh, I've only used it a few times so far, but basically you input a number of duplicates, let's say 10, an angle between the duplicates, so that's if you're looking at a clock, uh, you could break that into 12, one for every hour. Let's, let's try that actually, let's do 11 more duplicates, and the angle in here is going to be 360 divided by 12, which is in fact uh, 30 degrees, but that's okay. 
um, and just, uh, just so I can put some math in there, center circle point, I'm going to set as my next mouse click, and we'll also rotate these duplicates, let's do um, 5 degrees on every one, just to have a look at what happens. Hitting OK, it's going to ask me for an input point, I'm going to put it here, so what you'll notice is it's put one every 30 degrees around this circle, and it's also offset them at 5 degrees, so it's gone this way, it's gone 5 degrees, plus 10 degrees, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So this one here should actually be at 45 degrees. We can test that out here. Yep, you can see I'm constrained there to 45 degrees. So a very handy thing to know. Uh, I just thought I'd briefly show it to you. You can have a play with it in your own time. Uh, but I'm going to use it here to make each of my ship components or the cross sections slightly smaller than each other. So I'll see you in a sec. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So I think that's as far as I'm going to draw my ship today. Uh, I've had a fairly good crack at this and um, had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, I'm quickly just going to texture and render this up, uh, as I did with the previous uh, episode 3E before this. Uh, I'm going to record this anyway. I won't show it to you now, I might show it to you later on when we go into rendering and just talk about how I do it. Um, but for now, I don't want to overload you, I want you to focus on the task at hand. I'm just going to show you the capabilities for later on. So, back in a sec. So, I didn't have too much more time to spend on this today, but I just had a little go there at um, creating a few textures on that ship, some translucent sails, and just had to play with mapping some wood textures in, which is something that is uh, a little bit more difficult now in 2012, 2013, without the wood texture uh, modifier in the render section settings, but we'll learn all about that in 5A. So that's an example of what you could have achieved there. Hopefully there'll be a broad range of designs, and as always, I've drawn this in 3D in this case, just to uh, exaggerate lofting and extrude along a path and things like that. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable, nor feel it's relevant to you to be doing this in 3D, feel free to try it in 2D, uh, and come up with something amazing as well. So that's it for this lesson. The other aspect that we didn't really touch on uh, in this particular challenge from the 4A episode was the building doors and windows uh, features. So for the next one, which is going to be 4C, I'm going to do another challenge video this week, uh, and it'll still be within your holiday break or my holiday break, whichever one you're looking at. Um, we want to try and draw wherever you're living. So I'm going to draw, for example, my apartment that I'm currently living in, uh, and I hope that you can do the same. Uh, do it as close to scale as you can, obviously, if you can guesstimate or measure either of those, uh, and also try and include as many doors and windows and walls as possible, really. Uh, if you feel like furnishing, you can as well. I'm going to certainly have a small attempt at furnishing my place, and we'll see what happens next week. So stay tuned next Wednesday for episode 4C, and I'll see you then. Until then, good luck.